Hey guys, it is Saturday morning. I've got my cup of coffee and I want to talk particle physics. So let's head over to the bench and I'll show you what's going on with the electron gun in my scanning electron microscope project. So here is a schematic of the electron gun in the electron microscope. And I will run through the parts of it and how it's built first and then talk about operation. So at the top, this uh, curved piece uh, represents the filament, also called the cathode. In this uh, case, they're the same. Then there is a metal plate with a hole, and this is known as the Wenault cylinder. Uh, it could also be thought of as a grid. And then below that, there is the anode. So let me put these pieces out here, uh, the actual pieces. This is the filament, the Wenault uh, cup or Wenault uh, cylinder. In my case, it's just a flat plate with a hole in it very small hole. And the anode itself is really just a plate with a hole too. It could be cylinder shaped like this. So in the actual electron microscope, these items are spaced out about like this. So the filament is very close to the Wenault, and we'll talk about that. And then there's a fair bit of space between the Wenault and the anode. So I'll put these out and talk about what kind of voltages are on these. So the, the filament uh, is heated up by a DC power supply, which is what I'm representing with a battery with an arrow through it. And there's nothing special about heating up a filament with DC power, it's just convenient. If there was some other magic way to make the filament hot, that would work too. And then there's a couple of balancing resistors just so that current flowing into this little circuit here is balanced uh, to both legs of the filament, and uh, another variable resistor, a current meter, the actual high voltage supply, and uh, the high voltage supply connects to the anode. So one, one uh, convention I wanted to talk about first is uh, how to measure voltages in a system like this. <clears throat> you notice I, I made a ground symbol here, but I could have put the ground symbol anywhere. So when you talk about five kilovolts, you're really saying that the thing that you're talking about is five kilovolts in potential above a known ground point. And that ground could actually be the Earth itself, represented by a symbol like this, or it could be something else. So when I first drew this diagram out, I wrote down plus five kV for the anode and zero volts for the Wenault. But actually, it would be probably better to specify it as zero volts for the anode, since we're talking about that as earth ground, and negative five kilovolts for the Wenault. Um, I guess that's actually a very good concept to be familiar with, is that voltages are really just a potential difference between two different conductors. So it doesn't make sense to say, well, it's at 12 volts, or it's at 5,000 volts. You really have to say, it's 5,000 volts with respect to something else. So in this case, we're gonna call the anode ground zero and everything will be measured uh, to that. So um, these are all just metal conductors. We're not gonna talk about insulators yet or how this thing is built. Um, and I'll try to you know, give some dimensions here actually first. So the hole in the, in the anode is about, I think I settled on maybe one and a half millimeters. And the hole in the Wenault cylinder is about 500 microns or half a millimeter. I think I might have gone up to 750. Uh, the spacing between the, the filament tip and the Wenault cylinder bottom, the, the actual distance between um, the very tip of the filament and the actual bottom of the Wenault plate is quite low. In fact, it's, it's so low that the, the filament actually protrudes into that hole a little bit. It's, it's on the order of the hole diameter. So if the hole is 500 microns, uh, ideally the, the filament would only be 500 microns above the bottom of this plate here, which is, I mean, these are small distances, so that's, that's a tricky machining job. Uh, the filament itself, I think, is about a t 100 microns in diameter. I'll get some close-up shots of these. Okay, so I hope that gets the basic idea down. And let's talk about the operation now. 
So it, in, it, when you read a, uh, a description of how this works on the web, almost all of them say something like, well, the electrons are liberated from the filament and they're attracted to the anode. And that's uh, true, but only in a very limited sense. And it kind of bothers me because if you, think, if you take it literally, the electrons are um, boiled off of the filament. Just think of these little specks coming off the filament and they're drawn towards the anode. So they're sh shooting down here, but as soon as they go through the hole in the anode, if they were attracted to the anode in the general case, they would be pulled back up towards the anode again. That doesn't make any sense. That's not how it works. So actually what's happening here is the electrons are liberated from the cathode and accelerated by the field, the electric field that's between the anode and the Wenold. So if we're calling this anode zero volts and the Wenold is negative five kilovolts, there's a very strong electric field between these plates. And the field looks kind of like this. So this is a close up of the, the action here. And um, again, I, sorry about the voltage con uh, conventions. I, I said five kV at the bottom and zero at the top, but I, I hope that's okay. Um, the field is very flat. So if you're an electron and you're sitting right here, you're experiencing a very high acceleration in the downward direction, like this. But as soon as you go through the hole in the anode, there's no more field. So for example, if, if this is the anode, inside this metal cup, there's no electric field because it's all at the same potential. But above, the, above this cup, if this plate is set up like this, and this plate is at negative five kV, and this is at zero, there's a very high field, and that's what actually causes the electrons to move. So it's important not to think in terms of electrons are attracted to anodes. It's really just an acceleration due to the field. So um, maybe we can talk about this control circuit here. So we know that if there's a, if there's a big electric field between here, the electrons will be accelerated in a linear fashion. Uh, so what's the deal with all this? The, the Wenault, combination of the Wenault and the voltage on the cathode controls how many electrons are produced by this gun. And the setting is actually this, this variable resistor here, known as a bias resistor. Um, so our high voltage supply is connected between the anode and the Wenault, and that's always some fixed value, like let's say five kilovolts. But what's the voltage on the cathode? In this case, this bias resistor uh, sets up something known as automatic biasing. So as this gun is running and electrons are coming out of the filament, its potential is actually going negative, uh, excuse me, positive. Okay, sorry about that guys, I corrected an error here. This is actually supposed to be positive. The filament ends up becoming more positive in potential relative to the rest of the system. And the reason for that is as it's boiling off electrons, uh, think of getting rid of a negative charge, it's actually going to end up more positive. And this variable resistor controls how positive it's going to get. So if this, if this resistor is a high value, very high value, like let's say 10 mega ohms, uh, any current flowing through here will cause a large potential difference. So as this filament is boiling off electrons uh, at, a, at some current level, let's just say 100 microamps, uh, the 100 microamps flowing through this variable resistor will determine what voltage the cathode ends up being. So some round numbers for you. I, I think the cathode is normally about 400 volts higher than the Wenault. I don't actually know because in my system it's it's not measured, it's, it's, I'm just using this resistor. But you do want to know the emission current, so I have that uh, microamp meter, which shows how much current is actually going into the cathode, and that, that tells you how, much, uh, how many electrons are being emitted from there. Okay, so hopefully that is starting to make sense. Uh, basically what we've got here is three different voltages on the filament, when alt, and anode. And I said that by adjusting this variable resistor, 
the voltage on the filament will change all by itself because it's emitting electrons and it's, um, it will bias itself, basically. Uh, so how does this actually work? So if we look at the close-up here, this is the tip of the filament, the Winault and the anode. And I said that if an electron is in this field, it's going to experience a very high acceleration, and that's what actually causes the gun to work. So how do they actually make it from the tip into this field, into the accelerating field? And that, that's controlled by the potential difference between the filament and the Winault, which is adjusted by this, this resistor. So let's say the resistor is a huge value. In fact, let's just say it's open, infinite resistance. What's going to happen? The filament is going to get more and more positive as it boils off electrons and gets rid of its negative charge. It has no way of replenishing the charge because it's not connected to the rest of the circuit. This is infinite. So what's going to happen is the filament is going to get very, very positive, even more positive than the anode maybe. Well, I won't get that high, but it's, it's going to shoot up pretty high. And electrons that leave the surface, boiled off, are going to experience a field that actually causes them to go back to the filament. So if this filament is, let's just say, 800 volts, and the Winault is zero, any electrons that leave this filament are not going to be accelerated down the column. They're actually going to be pushed back into the filament because uh, you know, the filament is more positive than the Winault. So let's say we did have a value here. Let's say it's zero, actually. Let's say we shorted this out. That means that the filament is always going to be the same potential as the Winault, because this is a short. Now what's going to happen? Uh, now, these field lines would be very flat. In fact, they would not be drawn the way that they look now, because um, this is all the same potential. So you just have straight field lines running across here. These are actually equipotential lines. Um, that just show you know, the, the shape of the field. So any electrons that are boiled off in that case, all of them get accelerated pretty much, or any of them that make it down into this area. So if we look at the two extremes of the situation, we either have no electron emission or tons of electron emission. We can guess that if we set this value to be something appropriate, we can actually control the electron emission by regulating the voltage between the filament and the Winault. So at some happy medium, and in this case, with these sizes and voltages, it comes out to be on the order of a couple mega ohms. So if this is two mega ohms, uh, the filament voltage might be something like 400 volts higher than the Winault. And that causes the field to look like this, where there's sort of like a dip in there. And uh, electrons that are boiled off in a region where the dip touches the filament actually make it down into the field and are accelerated. And electrons that are boiled off over here on the side, they don't get sucked in. They actually get pushed back into the filament, or they just stay in a cloud around here. So it's a self-regulating, adjustable self-regulating electron gun. OK, so here we are at the actual microscope. And I'm going to point out some of the parts that we just talked about. So these two conductors are the, the filament uh, you know, lines. And you can see just barely the pins of the actual filament sticking up. So the filament is aiming downwards in this um, cup area here. And this is the Winault cylinder connection. And all of the metal in this entire microscope is the anode. So we're calling this zero volts ground. The Winault is you know, negative 5 kV, or whatever the acceleration voltage is. And the voltage on both of these is very close to about negative 4,500 volts, or whatever the bias voltage is on top of the Winault voltage. And the voltage between these is about uh, 1 volt at 2 amps, or 2 volts at 1 amp, or something like that, just to heat up the filament. So I hope this was interesting to you and made some sense. I certainly had some difficulty explaining it. So let me know if you have any questions, and I will see you next time.